Well, hello. Time for another lesson in the free web development bootcamp. Welcome. Hope everybody's having the most wonderful day. It is morning here in Vienna in Austria. My name is Ramon. If you're joining in for the first time, hi, we're doing a free web development bootcamp, which is self-paced. We're going through the free, let me try that again, through the free code camp materials in order to get the web design and development certification. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm a bit rusty this morning. Hope everybody's doing well. Let's see. Well, hello. Flora says, good morning, all. Cesium says, good time zone, everyone. I like that. I'm going to have to steal that. <laughs> That's good. Um, cool. Yeah, let me um, throw out some links, and we can go ahead and get started with our next exercise, which I'm quite excited about. We're doing a Rothko painting, uh, kind of like abstract art uh, with CSS and HTML. Flora from Nigeria, good to have you here. Grace says, hi, everyone. Oh, so great to see you all here. Cool. Um, great. So if you're joining in, if you're taking part in this bootcamp, please note we have a code of conduct, bit.ly forward slash BWC dash COC. Give that a look. Make sure that you're behaving in the way that we that you know fits in with the rest of the group. Um, ensuring everyone's safety and happiness as we learn to program. Because you know, learning to program is already hard enough as it is. So schedule, we have a schedule for the boot camp. Oh, look at that. Restarting here from Seoul. Wonderful to have you here. Great. So here's our schedule for the boot camp. That's on our website. I, oh, actually, I can show it here. Put up a new tab. Um, this is all written. Oh, oh, oh. Cesium just noticed that there's a weird thing on the schedule. The next lesson, learn CSS Flexbox by building a photo gallery, is not there. Huh. I'll have a look. Thanks, Cesium. I probably missed this. So all of this, all of this that you see here is written like in hand, written in hand with HTML. It is surprisingly uh, involved to write all of that HTML. <laughs> uh, thank you all for noticing that. Uh, cool. We'll take a look and we'll we'll get that fixed. But first, a couple more links. We have a Discord channel if you want to go ahead and join that. There it is. That's an invite that'll get you joined on Discord. You've also got we've also got a forum on Free Code Camp's platform. Go ahead and join that if you want to have a more, uh, let's say forum like experience. And finally, if you're watching this and it's super late for you, please don't worry. Remember that all of this is staying on YouTube, which you'll find by going to youtube.com forward slash at bad website club. Great. So first things first, I need to fight, figure out what's going on with the schedule that learning CSX by building a photo gallery, why that's missing. We'll figure it out, get that done hopefully today. Um, other than that, Oh, Flora's excited to know more about the box model. Well, let's dive right in, shall we? Let me grab this link here, put that into the chat, and let's dive right in. So what we're going to be doing today is using um, the, H the HTML box model in order to paint a Rothko painting, which is kind of like some really cool rectangular art pieces, as you can see here in the description. So, and... What the box model is, we'll get into as we go through these exercises. But in short, what they are is essentially a way of thinking about how each HTML element is positioned on a page. Remember, we have the content of that of that element. Then we've got its border, the padding around inside it. Sorry, let me start again. The padding inside it, the border around it, and the margin that spaces is out around others. I'm throwing out a lot of terms at once, but don't worry. We're going to illustrate that as we dive right in. So let's do that. I'm going to click on starting our project. And this is a preview of what we're going to build. I'm a little zoomed in, but essentially what we're going to be building looks like this really cool painting here. Great. So let's start coding. So we're making an HTML document. We'll start them all as we always do with a doc type, uh, um, exclamation mark, doc type, HTML, closing element. And then we'll need our HTML with our language set to English. Got to close that HTML element. 
a head and a body. So head, close head, body, whoop, body, and close body. And with that done, take a look at our code. That looks pretty good. If we want to format it to make the indentation look nice, we can uh, right click and go on format document. It looks a little bit more organized. And then click on check our code. It looks good. We pat ourselves on the back, pat, pat, and we keep going. Great. So in our HTML head element, we have a meta tag with Charsa set to UTF-8, the title element with the value Rothko painting, and in the body, we're going to add this image. Ooh, <laughs> Cesium says, and now we need a cats for all these boxes. Very important. <laughs> so meta char set set to string utf dash eight now remember meta tags are self-closing so we can leave that as is we've got our title set to rothko painting whoop by the way if you're curious about rothko just posted here for bold colors and lots of rectangles so go check that out it's really interesting <laughs> Great, so that's our meta and title. In our body, we're gonna need an IMG element with a source set to, and you know what? I'm gonna be lazy and copy this. So, copy and paste. There we go. Oh, look at that. So we've got a little bit of our box model going on. So that's our height, our width, our content. Here's our padding, here's our border. Here's our margin, I think. We're going to get this confirmed in just a moment. This is missing an alt text, I'm noticing, but we'll probably get to that in a bit. Check our code. Looks good. Pat, pat. Next challenge. So in the CSS box model, every HTML element is treated as a box with four areas. Imagine you receive a box from your favorite online retailer. The content of the item is a box, or in our case, a header, paragraph, or image element. So what we're going to do is change the source element in our image from this image to diagram. Oh, actually, can I just change this to a two? Because I'm noticing they're pretty similar. Ah, yeah, there we go. So we've got, there's our content, there's our padding, there's our border. Nice, check our code, looks good, pat, pat. We'll go to the next one. Great, so what you're seeing here is the fact that Free Code Camp is done open source for folks out of the spare out of their spare time. So if you're able to consider paying them $5 a month, if you're not able to, you can come back later and do it. I'm doing it on a separate account. This is more my teaching account of free code camp. So I'm just going to click on ask me later. Great. So the content is surrounded by a space called padding. We saw that here. That's the green one here. And the border is kind of like the cardboard box that our box comes in. So I'm going to change that to diagram three now to look at the next piece of content, which is, of course, a margin. Wait a minute. Did I do something wrong? Why am I seeing two images? Oh, no. They're just, it's just one big image, isn't it? My bad. Yeah, so the margin is going to be this area that's outside of the border, and that's kind of how we lay out our HTML elements in this series of boxes. Cool. Pat, pat. Let's move on. Yep, margin is the area outside the box. Here, the bottom element has a larger to other ah, two elements on top of each other. See, this is why you should read, Ramon. <laughs> so this one has a larger margin, so that box is going to be pushed further down the page. So what we've been doing so far is using these images to sort of understand how the HTML box model works. We can see here we've got two elements. This one has a larger margin, uh, sorry, this one has a smaller margin than this one, and that's why this one's further down. Now, when we're working on HTML, it might happen to you, because it happens to me a lot, that I mix up padding and margin for how I wanna space stuff out. And really, this is gonna come down to, and you're gonna love this, it's my favorite word, consistency. So depending on how you're doing this, depending on how you want to paint your HTML elements, as long as you're being consistent in how you use padding and margin and using these appropriately, remember, margin is to move, 
to space stuff apart, whereas padding is for the space inside an element. Ah, oh, Jess puts it so well. Padding is the bubble wrap inside your element. I love that. And you can, you know, paint it with a nice paint to make it inside of your element look nice. So now we're going to move on to right away start painting or programming our Rothko painting. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this image tag. Check our code. Looks good. We pat, pat. And I think we can start making our painting. Just a saying here, margin is how much your element is pushing its surrounding elements away. That's really well put. Thank you. Cool. So we're going to add a div. Let's close that out while we're at it. And the class is going to be set to, I'm going to call it canvas. That makes sense. We're going to paint in a canvas. Cool, we don't see anything yet because there's no content or any kind of CSS attributes in it. So we pat pat, we move on. Look at that, we're already 13% of the way. Before you can start styling the div you added, you need to link your CSS to your HTML. Right, we're in our HTML tag, or head tag, pardon me. So we're gonna add a link tag. I'm gonna make the rel set to be style sheet. And our href ref, where we're going to refer this to, is going to be styles.css. Whoops, there we go. Let's see how our code looks. And it looks good. Pat, pat. Now we can start writing some CSS. Oh, I love writing CSS. Cool. So even though our div has no text, it's still treated as a box with content. Write a CSS rule that uses .canvas selectors to set its width to be 500 pixels. Great, let's do that. So we are in styles.css now, and we're gonna write our first uh, CSS declaration, which is to say that any element with the class, that's the dot, canvas, is gonna have the following properties. It's gonna have a width of 500 whoop, pixels. Done. Now you might be wondering, hold on a minute, I can't see anything. Right. The box itself is 500 pixels wide, but we can't see anything yet. Let's move on to the next exercise. But in the meantime, I want us to start thinking like, wh why can't we see anything? Cool, that works, pat, pat. Let's move on. Great, so for our next exercise, still thinking about why we can't see that canvas yet. Set a height property. That's going to be six, 600 pixels. Done, but still can't see anything. Let's keep thinking why. I'm going to check our code. Looks good. Pat, pat. If anybody wants to tell me why I like it, I would appreciate it, please. Great. Um, now we're going to change the background color of our canvas. to have this here. Now this is a hexadecimal color. We learned about these last week. Do we remember what we are? We've got 4D red. So that's gonna be this amount of red. I'm gonna have zero F green. Oh, hey. We couldn't see it because it didn't have a color yet or any content. So zero F green and absolute zero blue. So there's our canvas, looks lovely. It looks pretty big because I'm zoomed in on my browser, but on your browser, it's probably gonna look a little bit smaller. Essentially this big, can I stretch? I, you know what? I think I can stretch a little, oh, 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 oh. that looks good. And just makes a really good point. Don't worry if you don't remember these hexadecimal codes. It's super common to need to look them up or experiment to find colors you like. Absolutely. I'm going to be honest. I mostly use online tools like, I think DuckDuckGo has a built-in color picker. So that's what I use. Great. So there it is. There's our canvas. Fantastic. Let's check our code. Looks good. Pat, pat. And now what are we going to draw next? 
Every painting needs a frame. So we're going to wrap the canvas element in another div. Give that div the frame class. Cool. So by wrap around, that means that we're going to add a div that's going to be outside of our canvas div. And it's going to have the class set to frame. That doesn't make a difference because remember, our frame doesn't have any content or padding or margin or any of that stuff yet. The box is only made, well, that's not true, is it? The content of the frame is the canvas. So that's we get, why we can see the frame because it's got a canvas inside it. But the actual border of the, can, of the frame itself, we can't see yet. And I imagine that's what we're going to be painting next, Pat Pat. Yep, there we go. We're going to write a new rule using the dot frame class selector. So remember, we're going to want to paint any element with the class, that's the dot frame, if I could spell that. So we're going to use a border shorthand when we learned about this last week. We're going to make it a solid border that's black and has a width of 50 pixels. <gasps> Look at that. Cool. So there's the border around our frame. Looks a bit, I wonder if it looks a little bit wonky here because it's kind of like super zoomed in or maybe you got some stuff to fix. Let's find out. Oh, wait, can't pat pat yet. Now I can. <laughs> <laughs> the frame is much too wide. Huh? See, I told you. <clears throat> so in dot frame, set its width to 500 pixels. Uh, width, 500 pixels. There we go. Nice. Much better. So Mitch is asking, why is the frame too wide by default when we first created it? Do you know what? I'm not sure. <laughs> so let's 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 try again. So right now, I wouldn't even say that the frame is too wide. I'd say that the canvas is too wide. Maybe I'm not understanding how this is done. Well, somebody new joined. Hi. So tell you what, Mitch, let's let me bookmark this and save it for later. I think it might have to do with how the block display is rendering these elements inside each other. If anybody knows, please help me out. For now, we're going to actually let's experiment with this. We have a minute. Display block. See what happens. This is the point where Ramon has no idea what he's doing. So right now the width of the canvas is 500 pixels. Oh, hold on a minute. What am I doing? I can just use the dev tools. We'll learn more about this later. Don't worry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've gone a little bit ahead of myself. I'm going to right click here on my element and I'm gonna to go to inspect. This is done in this browser. And that's going to bring up all of this stuff here, which looks like a lot, but bear with me. Let's see if we can find our way into our Rothko painting, which is going to take a little bit of like messing around. Here, preview. Oh, it is too wide. Interesting. Here we go. Cool, 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 cool. So let's look at, at the box of our frame. So that's the frame itself. The border is 50 pixels wide. So right now, our frame is 544 pixels because it's stretching. Ah, that's why. Because it's stretching to match the content of the div itself. See, as I move it, mm-hmm. That's why, because it's stretching. We're not telling it, hey, be as wide as you need to be. So that's why with CSS, oh, thank you for asking, Mitch. That's why we're telling it, hey, your width is going to be 500 pixels, and that's it. Boom. Because it's adapting. That's why it wasn't too wide before. It was too narrow. See? Because it's like, no, 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 I don't have enough space. But as I, wow, look, 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 look. see? <gasps> That's why, because it's stretching. Cool, that's why. So 
width 500. I got too excited doing that. So Mitch is saying we don't want the frame width to be responsive in this case. Not at the moment. We want the width, we want the painting to be strictly so. But what do you mean by responsive, Mitch? Could you tell us a little bit more, please? Uh, in the meantime, let's move on to our next exercise because I hope. Yeah. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. Cool. So now we're going to be using padding to adjust the spacing within an element. So in the frame, we're going to use the padding shorthand property to increase the space between, whoopsie, between the frame and the canvas elements by 50 pixels. The shorthand will increase the space on top, bottom, left, and right of the element's border and canvas within. Let's see what that means. So we're going to use the padding shorthand to have 50 pixels. Now notice what happens. There's the border, here's the padding, and here's the content. Yeah, so the black stuff is the, por is the border, the white part is the padding, and this brownish reddish part is the content, the canvas. TCMT is saying the width defaults to being the size of the viewport when it's not set. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you, CZM. Cool. So that's our padding. For fun, what if we do margin? Notice the difference. Now the space is outside the frame. Remember, margin is the space outside. Padding is the space inside. Check our code. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. Great. So now, oh, <laughs> there it is. Cool. So we're going to use margins to adjust the spacing outside the element. And so the frame itself, oh, sees him saying, I'm not sure if I was correct there. I was just guessing. Oh, very fair. Thank you. That, that sounds right. <laughs> Using the margin property, let's give the frame element vertical margin of 20 pixels and a horizontal margin of auto. Oh, this will move the frame down 20 pixels and horizontally centered on the stage. Cool. Let's give that a try. So margin is going to be, remember, for vertical, if we're going to have these two values, vertical goes first, so 20 pixels, which now has been applied. But we still want the horizontal margin to be auto, which will center it. Now, you can't quite see it here because I'm quite zoomed in. But if we, you see, now it's centered. Let's see how it is without that auto. Now it's not centered. So that's what that automatic margin is for. And as you can tell, it's outside of the element. Great. Let's check our code. Looks good. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. So inside our canvas, we're now going to add a new div. I'm going to call it one, we're going to give it the class one, pardon me. So class will be set to one. Great. This is looking like the markers exercise last week, right? Yes, Pat, Pat, let's go. So we're going to write a new rule that targets any element with the class. That's the dot one. And set its width to be 425 pixels. So we don't have an effect yet, because of course that div doesn't have any colors or content or height. So we keep going, pat, pat, let's move on. And now we'll set the height to be 150 pixels for our one. There we go. Cool, pat, pat, nice and quick. Now we'll do the background color, which is EFB. Seven, six, six, two. Cool. So that is EF red, B7 green, 62. Remember, this is hexadecimal, so that's a lot. 
That's a high number. It looks like 62, but it's, what is it? Two plus six times 16? Yeah, it's a big number. Let's check our code. <laughs> Great, we did it, pat, pat. <clears throat> Great, so now we're gonna be using margin to position this one inside the canvas. So we're gonna use margin. Oh, we're gonna be doing the same one as before. So 20. And auto. Huh. I would have expected the vertical margin to be applied here. But I bet the future lesson is gonna tell us what's up. Because our code passes, that's a pad pad. But let's move on. Uh-huh. Oh, so now the one is centered horizontally, but its top margin is pushing past the canvas and into the frame's border, shifting the entire canvas down 20 pixels. Add a padding of one pixel to the canvas element to give the one element something solid to push off of. So we're back in the canvas. We're gonna have padding of one, one pixel. Ah, that's much better. How stressful. I was like, what? Where'd it go? But of course, we need a little bit of content to have something to push off of. That makes a lot of sense. Let's check our code. Looks good. Look, we're almost 47 of the way. Pat, pat. So, ooh. Adding one pixel of padding to the top, bottom, left, and right of the canvas changed its dimensions to 502 pixels by 602 pixels. Replace the padding property with overflow set to hidden, changing the canvas back to its original dimensions. So overflow, interesting. So this is doing the same thing, giving us a little bit of something to push off of, but now this overflow is now hidden, meaning that we don't have that padding anymore, so the width and height are still five by 600, and we can still make this solid enough to push off of. So we're not overflowing out into the canvas when we push with the margin. Check our code, looks good. We pat, pat, we keep going. So we're gonna add, oh, it's time for our next rectangle. Great, so below this div with class one, we're gonna add a div with class two. There we go. No CSS, no styles yet. We've just added our div. Does it look good? Yes, it does. Pat, pat. Nice. Let's keep going. So now we're going to create a new CSS rule using two. So any div or element with the class, that's the dot two. We're going to be doing the width. Four hundred seventy-five pixels. Cool, our code passes. We'll submit our code to continue. Oh, I didn't pat pat, how rude of me. So Mitch has got a question here. Based on that last explanation, is it correct that padding and border are included in the elements dimensions, but margins are not? That would make sense. In fact, if we go back and look, uh, all right. We're not gonna lose our place here. Let's go to a tab. I've opened up a new tab. Let's go back to that one where we were looking at. Yeah. So all of this makes up an element's dimensions, right? Border, padding, and content. The margin is the space around the dimensions of that element. It's a good question. Thanks, Mitch. Back to our exercise. Let's see, we're gonna be, we set the width. Now we're gonna set the height to be 200 pixels. Still no content yet, because we haven't given it a color. But if we check our code, it looks good. And pat, pat, we keep going. Now we set the background color to be hexadecimal once again. Most of the colors you do in CSS are gonna be hexadecimal. I say most because, you know, what is life without ex without exceptions to that kind of rule? Cool, so that's 80F red. 
zero four uh, green and zero one blue, which gives us this. Can I call this wine red? I'm gonna call it. Or is this what mauve is? I'm really bad at color names. <laughs> Uh, it is a red, a dark red. <clears throat> let's check our code. Let's check our code. Great, pat pat. Ooh, okay. So now we're gonna center this element by setting all of its margin to auto. Great. So there it is, centered. Check your code. Looks good. Let me pat pat. Uh, why is it? Oh, we're gonna create our third class. Div with class. Uh, three. So now we've got one, two, and three. Check our code. Looks good. Pat pat. Let's keep going. So we don't always have to ooh, we don't always have to use pixels when sizing an element. We'll create a new rule. So any element with the class, that's the dot three. Oh my gosh, forgot I left myself some water. Excuse me. Um any class with the any element with the class three. So we're gonna set its width to be 91. Ugh. That's not a nine. There we go. 91%. Cool. Let's check our code. Looks good. We pat pat. We keep going. And we're going to set the height to be 28%. Still can't see it. Remember, we haven't set a color. Yep. Let's check our code. Looks good. Pat pat. Let's move on. Now we're gonna set the background color to be a hexadecimal color, which is B, that's not a B, B2 red, zero four green, and zero three blue, which is a, <clears throat> I believe the scientific term is brighter red. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> Let's check our code. Looks good. Hey, right, Pat. And we keep going. And we're going to center this element as well by setting its margin to auto. Mitch is asking 90, 91% of the width of the parent element, I assume. That's correct. So now I'm going to probably mess up my maths here. But this is going to be something like 4% to the left. Nope. Four and a half percent to the left and four and a half percent to the right. That's that spacing out because that's half of nine percent. Yes. Check our code. We did it. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. So it's helpful to have your margin push in one direction. In this case, the bottom margin of the one element pushes the two down by 20 pixels. We can see that here, because the one this one element has a horizontal margin, a vertical margin, pardon me, that is up and down, of twenty pixels, twenty pixels up, twenty pixels down. In the two selector, use margin shorthand property to set the top margin to zero. Oh, sorry, I got distracted by a question by Cesium. Is the weird stuff in 20 to 22 related to what people call margin collapse? What step are we on now? 23. Let's have a look. Short detour. Oh, maybe. Do you have a link to that by any chance, Cesium T? Please. Sorry. I get distracted by really good questions. In the two selector, use the margin shorthand property to set the top margin to zero, the horizontal margin to auto, and the bottom margin to 20. This will remove its top margin 
horizontally centered and set its bar mar blah, and set its bottom margin to 20 pixels. So that is zero to the top. I'm guessing 20 pixels to the bottom. Then we do auto and auto, right? I think I got this wrong. Let's see what it says. <laughs> so you should set the margin property to zero auto and then 20 pixels. My bad. So first the top, then the horizontal, and then the bottom, bottom pat margin. Much better. So now it's still horizontally centered. It's got 20 to the top and 20 to the bottom. Ah, much better. Pat, pat. Mitch is saying there's top, horizontal, and bottom when there are three. And you're absolutely right. Thank you. Yeah, so um, we're doing this in collaboration with Free Code Camp. So they're doing this for free. If you want to donate them, if you can donate them to them, please, of course, do. But don't feel stressed about it. The reason it shows up for me is because this is my teaching account, and I'm doing it on my personal account, my learning account. So we'll go and ask me later and move on. So the colors and shapes of your painting are too sharp to pass as a Rothko. And I don't want to be a faker. So we're going to be using the filter property to blur the painting by two pixels on the canvas element. Here's an example. Ooh. Well then, let's, uh, let's see where we are. We're in the canvas. We're going to blur our painting. So that's filter blur by two pixels. Oh. I put my, there we go. Look at that. Now it's blurry. But only the inside of the canvas. That makes sense because the frame isn't blurry. But of course, the insides of the canvas, the paint is. Cool. That looks weird. It looks like a, it's, a, it's a low resolution image inside the frame. <laughs> pat, pat. Let's keep making our painting look cool. So. Create a rule that targets both one and two and increase their blur effect by one pixel. So any class, sorry, any div with the class, that's the dot one. And then the comma is going to tell us also target elements with this selector, the dot two. And we will blur, we'll do the filter blur. And we're not going to actually put three here because it's already blurred by two. So instead, we're just going to put blur one pixel, and that's going to blur it just a touch more. Can't really tell the difference, but I guess we'll have to trust the browser that it is indeed a little blurrier. Pat, pat. Ah, oh, it still looks weird. Oh, and three is going to be even blurrier by two pixels. Cool. So three, that's a, th there we go. Any element with that dot three. Oh, wait a minute. We're already in three. My bad. So we're going to filter blur. That's two more pixels. Yeah, I guess that looks a little blurrier, right? Let's see if the code agrees. It does. Let me pat pat. Cool. So the rectangles are too small, and their edges don't have the soft quality of a painting. Increase the area and soften the edges of one by setting its box shadow to this. So we're in one. We're going to set the box shadow to be zero, zero, three pixels, three pixels. And then the shadow is going to have this color of EF, E7, 62. Oh, so we've, you can see here we've applied a little bit of a blurry shadow around our rectangle. Very cool. Looks good. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. Great. So we're going to use the same box shadow on two, but we're going to change the color from this to this. So that's going to be box shadow set to zero, zero, Three pixels, three pixels, and 
this color here, which is hashtag ATF0401. And there we've got a little blurry rectangle again. It looks good. Pat that. Friends, I think we're going to finish today. I'm excited. So we're going to add a third box shadow to the three rectangle now. Box shadow. Set it to be zero, zero, five pixels, five pixels, and the hashtag B20403. See, and it's got a little bit of that more painting like feel to it. Let's check our code. Looks good. We pat pat. Look at that, we're 87%. Friends, I don't think we're going to have homework today. How cool your homework is going to be to relax. I love it. So the corners of each rectangle are still too sharp. So we're going to round each corner of the one element by nine pixels using the border radius property. So border dash radius is going to be set to nine pixels. And you see? It got a little bit rounder. In fact, if we do it even more, you can see it's going to become just, just for fun. Huh? So the bigger the radius of that border, the more rounder it gets. Well, if we make it big enough, then it becomes just a perfect oval shape, oval-like shape. So let's check our code. That looks good. Pat, pat. Now on the second rectangle, we're gonna set the top left radius and the bottom right radius to eight pixels and the top right radius and the bottom left radius to 10 pixels. Cool. So border dash radius. <laughs> Grace, no. <laughs> you can make the Burger King logo with this. <laughs> oh no, things I can't unsee. Um, that's really good. Uh, where was I? Right, border radius, eight pixels and 10 pixels. Cool, let's see what we got. That looks rounded. Check our code. Yeah, passes, pat, pat. So the border radius property accepts up to four values to round the top left, top right, bottom right, and bottom left corners. So in three, we're going to do just that. Top right is, oh no, don't put it out of order. No, 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 my brain's going to melt. Oh no, we're good. So top left is 30, top right is 25, bottom right is 60, and bottom left is 12. And this kind of goes in clockwise order. Border radius. So top left is going to be 30 pixels. We use the space for the next one, which is top right, which is 25 pixels. Bottom right is going to be 60 pixels. And then the bottom left is going to be 12, 12 pixels. And check it out. If you see down here, look, it's kind of like, each of them is, has a different border radius. And this is really cool. So it lets you kind of draw differently interesting shapes with this border radius. And all of this done with HTML and CSS, which I think is amazing. So we pat pat. We're almost done, friends. So we're going to, ooh, ooh, we're going to rotate them to give them a more imperfect hand painted look. So we're going to use transform on the one selector. Are we here? Yep and rotate it counterclockwise by 0 0.6 degrees. So rotate 0. Point. Where's my point? There it is. Nope, that's not a point. There it is. Six deg. Now you can't quite tell, but it, it, it rotated ever so slightly. In fact, if we rotate it a little more, you're gonna see, whoosh, eh? Let's, if we rotate it, okay. Now that you're giving me the power to do it, 90 degrees, you can see now it's on top and it's not overflowing, which is good. So we're just going to rotate it ever so slightly. So 0 0.6 degrees. So just like 
a little bit, a little bit, you see, it's just a little bit tilted, which I think is super cool. As Season puts it, CSS art is indeed awesome. Check our code. <gasps> oh, rotate it counterclockwise. I was supposed to do it the other way. See, Ramon, this is why you should read. So we want to rotate it actually not 0 0.6 degrees clockwise, but 0, 0, 0, 0 0.6 degrees counterclockwise. So that's, nope, I just deleted it. I wanted to put a minus. There we go. So now we can see it's rotated 0 0.6 degrees this way. Still looks very cool. Does the code agree? It does indeed. Pat, pat. <gasps> We're nearly done. Rotate the two element clockwise. Now it's going to be positive by 0 0.4 degrees. So we're in two. Yes. Transform. Rotate. 0 0.4 deg. And you can see it's a little. Ooh, there we go. They kind of look like messily stuck. I might in the end zoom out so that we can like take a proverbial step back and admire our work. But for now, we've rotated. Our code looks good. Yes. Pat, pat. Are we nearly done? We are nearly done. 98% of the way. Amazing. So we're going to rotate the three counterclockwise by 0 0.2 degrees. And with this final step, your Rothko painting is now complete. Fantastic. So transform, rotate. And remember, this is counterclockwise, so that's a negative. 0 0.2 deg, which is again, extremely subtle, but there it is rotating. Check our code. We did it. Now I don't know what happens if I press submit and go to the next challenge now. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to expand this a little bit. Look at my zoom, just zoom out ever so slightly. Look at that, friends. We did it. We have painted a Rothko painting. And I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I feel quite accomplished having done this. So that's, do you know what? I'm going to give myself an extra pat pat because I've earned it. So we're going to zoom back in. Look at that. You have no homework today. You've just completed the Learn the CSS Box model by building a Rothko painting. And of course, you can donate if you like. We'll go on uh later so friends we are done for today we are class is done 10 minutes early how cool is that um if there's any questions of course feel free to drag them in um and grace correctly says clicking submit takes you back to the courses page which is good i just didn't want to i wanted to take a step back and look at our painting so what do we have next so tomorrow we're going to be learning CSS Flexbox by building a photo gallery. I will update the schedule. Sorry, friends. That was my mistake. Uh, let's see. What else have we got? What else have we got? So tomorrow we'll be doing this. But today, in about 10 hours, if my math serves me, later today, take a look at the schedule. Oh, if you want to see some more CSS art, just says... Cassandra does some really cool art. And can I can I load that up? Would that be appropriate? Let me just take a quick look. CSSartist.com. <gasps> Ooh. Whoa. Okay, this is actually pretty. This is super cool, friends. Let's take a quick detour. Wow. Check this one. Like I <laughs> look at this one. Using CSS to draw, can y'all guess what it is yet? <sighs> How cool is this? <laughs> Amazing. Um, so what we're going to do is um, later today, we're going to have our partner stream with Couchbase. Don't miss that. That is youtube.com slash, give me a sec. Uh, couch. I need the link for that. I need the link for that. Can I please get? Yes, 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 yes. Here, we're going to be joined later today by 
catch base to do our partner stream. Don't miss that. Flora's got a question. How do we incorporate banners of flowers on the header and footer of our pages? That's a great question. So if we're going to be incorporating what I would imagine are images of flowers, we would have in our header and footer elements a image tag with that CS with that source set to a picture of flowers. We'd probably have, want to have that off, off on the left. If you have an example or a link you'd like to play with, please send that to us. Also, actually, if you want to work on collaborate on this sort of thing, uh, let's bring up Discord. Yes, we're on Discord. Come and collaborate here. Got the link right there for you. If you want to ask questions on the forum, we've got that as well. And of course, if you're watching or just joining now and being like, oh, I missed out on the fun of the Rothko painting, don't worry. Everything is on YouTube. YouTube.com slash at Bad Website Club. Well, friends, I think that covers everything for today. Um, let's go off and relax. I'll see you all later at the partner stream and tomorrow to do some CSS. It's going to be great. But until then, take it easy. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you all later. Bye, everyone. <laughs>